I'll agree 100%. All right, let's talk about the media. So okay. we meet Gus. He is a editor at the Baltimore Sun. We meet Ama, who's the good reporter. And then we meet Templeton, who's a lion sack of shit. Um, <laughs> he, who is the actual New York Times, the black New York Times reporter who um, got in trouble for lying about his stories and then wrote a book called Burning Down the Master's House? I am <laughs> I am shaking my no, head because I've heard of it, but I do not know that. That is a now. real fucking story, by the way. The guy, the guy that got fired for lying in the New York Times wrote a book called Burning Down the Master's House. Thanks for thanks for being ungracious and you know for the New York Times giving you a job, you asshole. Oh man, I'm ta- I'm checking out Google right now just to see if we could get a uh, an answer on that. But go ahead and continue. Um, and so basically, much like with season four in the schools and season two with the docs, there's a lot of time spent on world building. What is it like to work in an actual newsroom? And much like season two, where it's like this is the death of an industry that we're watching happen in real time, what the paper. And, and you and I have talked about this. The guys in the group chat have talked about this. We talk about this with podcasting. We talk about this with media. There's that always that duality of wanting to produce the best product you can produce, but also knowing that this is a sales job, you have to make a product people are willing to buy. Right. And right. having to reconcile the two sometimes creates dirtier hands than maybe people would feel comfortable with. And so that's kind of a flowery way of saying you have the people who run the paper who know that the print media, ha ha, your medium is dying. Um, you know, the, the print media is quickly is going that a down. Simpsons the, thing. Is yeah, that what you're doing? Simpsons, okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> it was Just literally sure. talking about print media when he said that. Um, <laughs> so Robert and I'd like to do that bit all the time. Um, anyway, so they know that the print media is dying. They know that papers are, are folding up every day. And so they have to write about entertaining things because we, to get people to continue to buy the paper. Sensationalized right. things. And then you have the sort of idealized um, way of looking at things as represented by Gus, who's like, we should just write the news and do the best job of writing it possible. Oh, and make sure that we're moral and honest about it, not fabricate shit. And so that puts him at odds with Templeton, who invents stories out of whole cloth. Yeah, yeah. Fakes phone calls to himself. Yep. Uh, you know, as this guy is the absolute worst yep. person that they need in that media room. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and you know, because, it, because he's willing to pay ball. He's willing to play ball with the with the bosses who are concerned about writing papers. He is protected up on high. Meanwhile, you have Alma, who's like, there's nothing in his notes. He was shaking a pad, yeah. yelling, it's all in my notes. There are no notes. And there's and nothing gets, there. Yeah, and they send her off to fucking Siberia or some shit. Yeah. You're probably going to ask me this question, but I, I, I'm going to go ahead and hit you with it first. Um, mm-hmm. What was... So the point of this whole plot was just to kind of show you like how print media is on the brink of going under. So we've got to make stories uh, that grab everybody's attention and make sales. Was there a, like a subplot here of like, should we not trust the media? I know right. that really wasn't on the forefront of things, but that's kind of the things that I was pulling from this. Like, now I don't believe how ha- I've got people making shit up. I'm and you can see that that's happening. There's people that are Scott Templeton gets called out by many a people who he's talked to throughout this mm-hmm. yeah. thing. But uh, I noticed that that was kind of a thing they were leaning towards too. But would you say that that uh, you yourself is what's the main point of this subplot here for the sun? Okay. Well, real quick to address the, the reporter I was referring to, it's Jason Blair. Jason Blair, yeah. And his book is called Burning Down My Master's House, My Life at the New York Times, you ungrateful piece of shit. And in the description in Google Book says, the journalist who was at the center of the journalism scandal involving fabrication and plagiarism, the New York, he's the one doing it. That's like, he was involved. No, he's the guy. He's the he guy that involved. lied. 
um, at the New York Times offers his own take, his own truth, Jesse Starcher. He was offering his own truth. Yeah. Um, how mu- now? How much? Yeah. Like, who's going to believe what is written in this book? Okay. Offering a critical look at the failures of modern news media. Oh, the guy who lies, the guy who lies, the guy who's ass fired from the New York Times is going to tell us what's wrong. With it's a, it's media. a one page book of a picture of himself. <laughs> yeah, him <laughs> like holding a mirror, <laughs> looking sad. <laughs> to, to answer your um, question, the point of uh, you know. I think David Simon knew they 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 were coming to the end of the wire, and he was kind of out of ideas at this point. Mm-hmm. And I think he, and you know, you got to remember, you know, like there was either Hermit him or Ed Burns, one of the two, worked at the paper, and I think he just wanted to talk about that experience. Mm-hmm. But I think they also want, you know, just, just like season two, though, they wanted to address that the newspaper industry is dying and what that looks like and how and how that affects people, how that affects the way that you know. One of my problems that I've had over the years in podcasting with some of my contemporaries was some of our contemporaries continue to work in the industry as paid writers. So you have people who are sent to UFC fights, for example, to cover it as media. And I would get aggravated because I would feel like some of those people were saying things that were not true, but they thought... In order to keep their access, that they would say, okay, you know, yeah, and I've I've always had a problem with that, and I well, I understand it. A lie is a lie is a lie. Um, and I think what David Simon with the media stuff in season five is at what point is the media betraying itself and the peep in the people when they're not giving accurate portrayals of the news when there's so much agenda driving what's being reported i remember um like a study of the media and like the way things are reported being so completely skewed an example of that being depending on who's committing the crime they'll they may or may not report the race of the offender so like like if it's like a black person you know it's black guy commits robbery you know if it's a white person it's guy in red sweatshirt you know or vice versa you know commits robbery it's like you're reporting on the news differently based on the outcomes you want to see yeah and i think that was the point he was trying to get across when you take a step back and you look at the you use the word agenda which is a great Mm -hmm. word because message (laughs) the the agenda here for the news each of these uh, institutions that we're looking at in this season have agendas. We've always stuck with the police, mm. homicide unit, whatever. Yeah. They've had an agenda. The, the mayor's office has an agenda, and so does the sun. It has an agenda as well. And you can see sometimes how they actually parallel each other. Mm-hmm. Um, By the way, there's a you talk about agendas, and everyone has their own agendas. Narice might be my new favorite character of season five. Okay, all right. He's the city council president. Oh my god, she has so many great lines in this season. Like when, when Burrell is finally all out going out on his ass, like for bringing in fake stats, and he and, and she tells him, she just flat out tells him, like if you comply, you will be taken care of. You go out kicking and screaming, right? Like like dude, Norris, like Margot Robbie in Babylon is more man than anyone in season five. Norris <laughs> kicks fucking ass, man. Yeah, she- um, there was that. You know, there was something, there's another line about, like, I know because he gave away the fucking store just to get rid of you. Um, <laughs> right at the end, when Daniels, mm-hmm. uh, where she's upset with Daniels, it's like, right. well, I know how to play this game. He's either going to do what I say or he'll be resigning soon. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, she knows yeah, where she's she, at and she knows she how to play. She don't take no mess, man. No, she does not. Madam no. President, don't take no mess. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so man, what do you, you think of the Scott Templeton media Gus story? Well, I mean, I, I love seeing Michael Clark, Michael Clark, right? That's who it, Clark Johnson. Sorry, not Michael yeah. Clark, Clark Johnson. Um, coming back, you know, being uh, being kind of like the I say coming back, he was never in a previous season of The Wire, but we know he was from Homicide. Right. Uh, so seeing him show up in a David Simon joint is great. Uh, and he did a great job as Gus. Uh, I mean, I was entertained by the plot. You know, I had a good time watching it, but 
as to what I took from it, clearly it was just there so it could tie in with McNulty. I think know? I think my problem with the writing of this season was through all throughout it. We we talked about the serial killer thing being not particularly believable and a little sensationalist for a movie for a show that's so realistic. Excuse me. I have the same problem with Gus. Okay. Where I, I think Gus is supposed to be a symbol of a type of character. I'm not entirely sure a human would act that way. Like really? him yelling. What, what, him, well, like him yelling at the one of the editors, we can't print this shit. Like <laughs> at some point, self-preservation for most of us kicks in. He is he's not so... he's not some drug dealer on a corner. He is a professional journalist with a high degree of power. At some point, he has to know if they're acting the way that they are and you know and okay with creating fictions and more concerned about winning a Pulitzer he has to know yelling in the editor's face we can't print this shit's going to get him nowhere nowhere they have him right. doing that because he's supposed to represent that frustration you know he's supposed to represent that righteous indignation and it's like i don't buy that an, that a human being would act that way frustration is a great term for how I felt watching the sun mm -hmm. angle too. Cause I, you know, watching Scott Templeton, he doesn't really suffer too many consequences. He suffers <laughs> not. He gets a Pulitzer. He's, yeah. He's shaking hands, getting a Pulitzer at the end mm -hmm. credits, you yep. know, before it's remember it's, how he said nothing stops bitches and whores. Also the bad guys <laughs> always win. Right. <laughs> right. I was, yeah. I that was probably the one thing I took out of that part of it mm -hmm. was just how frustrated I was because I wanted Gus to be able to put this guy in his place. And there's so many times where Gus is going out. He's investigating if Scott Templeton is actually putting out legitimate stuff and he finds holes in everything. Mm -hmm. But nope, Scott Templeton. Here you go. Here's a golden key. You know, you, because every time he went to say something, he got shot down by his bosses. Right, because they like Scott, and Scott was going to get him a follow. I, I, you know, I can identify. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that I can right. identify with Gus. So I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I like Gus as a character. Um, Clark Johnson, one of my favorite actors. Uh, so there you go.